city sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. It's Christmas time, and Christmas time means a lot of things. Toys, candy, and when I was a child, it meant that big red stocking with the candy, apple, and the nuts. That was about it at our house, except one thing more. They always read the Christmas story from the Bible, telling us the real meaning of Christmas. But it's rather sad sometimes that it's a holiday. It's a time for the family to come together and eat. It's a time for boys and girls to get gifts. And now in our generation so often we've left out the most important of all, God's Word. But in my memory, and I hope at Christmas time in your home, you'll turn to the Gospel according to Luke and remind yourself of the Christmas story. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this which has come to pass, 
which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. This scripture is the fulfillment of prophecy. The prophecy of the Old Testament, how God made man, placed him in the garden, gave him laws and rules and regulations, and man broke God's laws, were driven from the garden, lost his fellowship. But throughout the scripture of the Old Testament, it prophesied that a Savior would come, that God would give his only begotten Son, that he would not only come and be born in a lowly estate, in the stables wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, but that he would grow into manhood, and so he did. He was baptized of John, and the heavens opened, and the Spirit descended in the form of a dove and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That good was healing the sick. He opened the blind eye, he unstopped the deaf ear, he made the lame to walk. He cast out the evil spirits that had people bound and made them new people and set them free. He rebuked fears from people's lives and he gave them hope in life, in death, and eternity. He expressed the love of God, the personality of God in his earthly ministry. He proved himself to be God manifest in the flesh as he walked upon the water. He broke the loaves and the fishes and fed the hungry. He raised the dead. And then he carried a cross, fulfilling the scripture, to die for the sins of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave, and Christ so loved that he gave, and now he dies for your sin and my sin. They take his body from that cross and place it in a new-made tomb. And in fulfillment to the scripture, that third day he came forth from that tomb, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for the believer. And soon he is coming back, as you have seen him go away, coming back for his own. For the trump of God shall sound, and those that are asleep shall rise first. And we that remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Christmas story is more than the babe in the manger. It's the plan of salvation and redemption of Almighty God. To redeem man and place him not in the Adam race, but back into the God race, that he may have fellowship, the Lord is my shepherd for life, that he may have hope and comfort in death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And that he may have hope in eternity, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the real Christmas story, the total Christmas story, the story that was told unto me by my father and my mother. The story that was told unto them by their parents. For we have inherited a faith, not only in the scripture, but in the belief and the practice of our lives and our home. We've inherited this great inheritance, this great faith that is ours all because God loves us and cares for us. And our prayer is that we may pass this faith on to the next generation, to our children, and to their children. A house so quiet and so humble, a child beside her bed, her hands clasped tightly it's time to pray, so she bows her little head. 
Happy birthday, Jesus. Mommy said that you were near and that you had a birthday this time every year. She told me how you listen to every word we say and that you hear us calling in the night or in the day. She explained how bad they hurt you and made you suffer so, but said you let them do it for girls like me, I know. She told me about the manger they put you in. I'd let you have my blanket if I was there back then. She said you were watching everything we do, her and Daddy and Grammy and our new baby, too. I liked what Mommy told me about how you healed the lame and that they don't have to have any wealth or fame. She told me you were so awful good, and then she made me cry. She said they nailed you to the cross. They wanted you to die. She said that you forgave them, though, because you were dying for our sins. And then it made me happy when she said that you came back again. Mommy said Christmas is what we celebrate, because on that day you were born. So I hope I'm not too late to wish you a happy birthday, dear Jesus. I'll be true. Because Mommy said if I was good, you'd let me live with you. Lord. 